Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, I want to talk to you about the Portable Ops Challenge. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So the Portable Ops Challenge is something that I learned about just after it happened last year. And I do believe that last year was the first year they had hosted this contest. So I put it on my calendar to make sure that I could participate this year. And I wanted to share it with you guys today. It's kind of unique in its scoring and the way it tends to, or the way it does, equalize portable stations uh, when they're trying to participate in a contest against fixed stations. So the scoring takes into account uh, if you're portable or if you're fixed and how much power you are running. Let's jump over to the website real quick and kind of scroll through a little bit of this and then I'll leave links down below in the description so you guys can find all of this information as well. So the website that I'm on right now is foxmikehotel.com forward slash challenge. And again, I'll leave that link down in the description below. Now, the contest is going to happen September 4th and September 5th. Uh, and it's a little unique in the way that, uh, that they break this thing up uh, as far as the time. It's not a continuous time there. There's actually, I think, three different segments, but we'll check that out in just a second. But uh, you can see right here on the website that the aim is to make portable operations on par with more typical fixed base operations while preserving the enjoyment of being in a new operating environment. And it goes through here and tells us about the theory of uh, contest scoring factors. Now, here's a unique one. And let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger for you guys. I think you should be able to see that on the screen now. But it, uh, it, it's a little unique. They've got this kilometers per watt rating. Uh, and you basically look at the Maidenhead grid, grid square uh, the distance in kilometers uh, between the two uh, stations that are making the contact, and you divide that by the reported power output in watts. Uh, and, and that's kind of interesting. And then you get different points based on whether you're fixed or portable. There's a different score depending on what mode you're using. So phone gets the most points, uh, and then CW and digital, I can't remember, I'll look at that here in just a second uh, when we scroll down, but those two are different as well. Uh, and you get fewer points uh, depending on which mode you're using, or more points depending on which mode you're using, depending on how you look at that. But they go on to say here that the kilometers per watt metric tends to equalize power used as well as antenna gained. So I'm going to scroll on down to the bottom of this page. So here we go. Here's the contest period. And you'll see right here that we've got uh, three different sessions. So uh, it's a four-hour operating period. Uh, there's two of them on September 4th and one of them on September the 5th. Kind of like field day where you can only work uh, each station once per band. And the bands that they're going to include in this are 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10. And again, we can work CW, phone, and digital. And the exchange is just the uh, four character uh, Maidenhead grid square. Now at the very bottom of the page, I'm actually going to go ahead and jump over to this rules document here. And this is a PDF file, so you could uh, download it to your device if you wanted to. But I wanted to take a bit closer look at this scoring. And it's a, a little bit complicated as far as the metric that they're using. Uh, you'll see that here, the QSO value. You've got to multiply out uh, four different things to figure out exactly what the value of that QSO is. But you can see here, if you're using digital to make that contact, you're only getting two points. If you're using CW, you get three points. And if you're using SSB, you get four points. Uh, now, that's quite a bit different than field day because field day, you get uh, more points working digital 
or CW. But I think the whole thing here is they're looking at like an FT8 contact is quite a bit easier to make than say a single sideband contact when you're running uh, a limited number of watts in the field, maybe your QRP, and you're only running 5 or 10 watts. But all of that is calculated into the score value for each QSO point. Uh, and then we've got uh, the QSO type multiplier. So depending on which class stations are working, you can get uh, different points depending on that particular class. And then, depending on how many transmitters you have at your particular site, you know, if you grouped up with uh, some friends or whatnot, that's going to change one of the multipliers as well. So if you've only got one transmitter, you're going to get four points uh, for that particular QSO. If you're running two transmitters, uh, you're only going to get two points. And if you're running uh, three or more transmitters, you're going to only get uh, one point uh, for the transmitter modifier. And next, it goes through describing the category of stations, whether you're portable uh, or fixed. And finally, a few rules that are applicable to both classes. Then it goes on to tell you about the logging format that you're going to need to submit if you want to submit those logs and uh, try to see how well you score against other people doing the same contest. It goes through also telling you where to submit the logs to. It's got the email right here on the site and uh, some awards uh, that I think they're going to try to give out a grand champion and a distance champion. So overall, I like the idea of this contest because it kind of puts everybody, whether you're working fixed or a portable station, it puts everyone on an even playing field. And I think that'll make it a little bit more interesting when it comes to the scoring. The scoring is uh, a little bit more complicated than normal. Uh, it would be kind of cool if they had some sort of application that uh, would total all of the points for you. But it looks like for now we may have to do that manually. Maybe uh, some of these guys that are writing these logging applications, uh, if, this, if this portable operations challenge catches on, maybe those guys will start incorporating that into theirs. It'd be really cool to see this inside of Hammers. All right, guys, well, there you have it. Another opportunity to get out in the field and get on the air. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.